Okay, as you can tell by the title of this video, I'm not going to be purchasing an Xbox One X. So I think it's very important for me to preface everything in this video by saying this is nothing about fanboyism, this is nothing about why one product is better than the other, or why you should or should not do anything. This is just my personal experience and why I am not purchasing an Xbox One X you might find your situation different and you might purchase an Xbox One X. And I think that's great because I support as many console makers on the market as possible. I wish there were more. Um, you know, I owned, going back to the PlayStation 2 era, I had a PlayStation 2, I had a Dreamcast, I had an Xbox, the original Xbox, I had a GameCube, the next generation, I had a Nintendo Wii, I had an Xbox 360, I had a PlayStation 3, I own a uh, Wii U. Um, on this channel, I've unboxed an Xbox One. I no longer have it, but uh, I support a lot of... Uh, I, I wish there were more. I wish there were more uh, players in the console market. I wish Apple was involved. I wish Samsung was involved. I wish Google was involved. I wish Amazon was involved. Because I'm a gadget guy. I like gadgets, basically. So I would love to have a new gadget to play with in my house. But the reason I'm not purchasing an Xbox One X has nothing to do with fanboyism or anything like that. I like Microsoft's products. Um, I like alternatives to Microsoft's products, but I like Microsoft's products. I own currently an Xbox, the original Xbox. I own two Xbox 360s, and I have an Xbox one controller which I use for my computer, but more on that later. So this is not a hate-filled video, this is more of a constructive criticism video as to why I'm just not compelled to purchase an Xbox One X. So I think going back to PlayStation 4 versus Xbox One, there's always been this um, black cloud over Microsoft about, oh, we're, we don't have the most powerful console. That's why people cho chose Sony. So they wanted to uh, check that box off that they now have the most powerful console ever created, which is good in some ways and bad in others because basically you don't have any software that's exclusive to the Xbox One X that's going to exploit that power. So you're basically dealing with uh, just better resolutions and uh, uh, better rendering all, all across the board and faster than the current Xbox One, which is great. Uh, I think that play was for the third parties. So they wanted to finally get that off of their shoulder that, they, that the Xbox One was not as powerful as the PlayStation 4, and that's why people flocked to the PlayStation 4. Although I think it's more complex than that. I think there's a lot of factors that turn people off to Xbox One, most notably the fact that they kind of just, and this has been covered to death, so I'm not going to cover it you know, too much here in this video, but to the fact that uh, Microsoft kind of pivoted from games console to, hey, this is an entertainment box. And that's why everybody kind of were annoyed with what was going on there. And then they saw Sony was doing different things, which they liked, which was more consumer friendly. So I think that's more the reason why Xbox One is faltering, even though it's still selling well, but why it's not uh, the runaway success that Microsoft had hoped it was. But they want to check off that box, hey, we've got the most powerful console out there. So I think that's a play for third parties. So third parties drive, uh, drive this industry in a lot of ways. First parties do, third parties do, but in different ways. So you have to have both, basically. So third parties, uh, your games most likely, they'll either be the same as a PlayStation, depending how... how uh, much effort the developer wants to put into developing that game, uh, or it will be better on the uh, Xbox One X. So obviously the Xbox One X just launched this week at the time of filming this video, so we'll see as time goes on if that's the case, but that's generally what you can expect out of the Xbox One X is that you're going to get the console that's going to play all of your third-party titles with the highest resolution possible and uh, it's going to play it, you know, not necessarily better because the experience should be the same, but just more visually pleasing. So they wanted to check that off. 
So that's all well and good that they have the most powerful console on the market. However, that's not why I buy consoles. I think power is important to a certain degree. You want to have a console that is powerful enough that the third-party developers are going to want to support it. So if you have a console that is, you know, third parties are going to want to make games for every platform imaginable, or as many as possible. And that usually starts with PC all the way down. So if you're not in that competitive realm of power with the system, then you're getting yourself, you're cutting yourself out of that game. You're, 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 you're shunning or you're, you're turning off uh, third parties who are going to help sell your system. So in that aspect, power is important because you want to be somewhere where in the ballpark in the same game as all the other platforms out there. So that's where power is important. However, do you need the most powerful console? That's up to you to decide. I don't. I don't need the most powerful console on the market. Now, I mentioned before I'm a gadget guy. I've owned all the consoles in the previous two generations. So why is this one any different? It comes down to the games. It comes down to the games, and that's the beginning and the end of it. I love gadgets. If you're familiar with this channel, you know I've mentioned it in this video. I love gadgets. I love just, you know, it's, it's fascinating to me. But um, I'm not going to buy something that's going to be... I'm not going to spend a lot of money on something that is just going to sit there, that I'm not going to use. And it used to be with the first two generations of Xbox consoles, it used to be that that was the only place where you could get that experience. You couldn't get it on PC, you couldn't get it whatever. There were exclusives on the platform that you couldn't get anywhere else. So I find that is a double-edged sword because the reason, one of the reasons um, I'm not going to buy an Xbox One X is because I can only think of two games right now that I want to play on Xbox One that are exclusive to Xbox One as a console. And that's Gears of War 4 and ReCore. I heard ReCore wasn't that great, but I'd still like to play it. Gears of War, I have played all the other Gears of Wars. Uh, I haven't finished Gears 3, but I've finished all the other ones. Um, so I intend to finish Gears 3 still. But that's a situation where I play that with co-op with a friend, so it's the delay on it is basically that uh, my schedule has to match with this friend that I play it with. So there's two games that I want to play on Xbox One. That's it. So is it worth buying that console for those two games? If the price is low enough, Black Friday is approaching pretty rapidly, and uh, you're going to get some good deals out there. So should I pick up an Xbox One? Definitely not an Xbox One X, because I'm not going to shell out $500 for two games for performance that's just... The, the juice is not worth the squeeze. I'm not going to shell out $500, which could be used somewhere else very more effectively and more efficiently in my life, um, than buying maybe an Xbox One and playing those two games on there. But the one thing that keeps me from buying an Xbox One at all is that all the games that are available on Xbox One are also available on PC. And I have a gaming PC that's about six feet behind the camera here in my living room. So, that's a good thing. I think the Microsoft's move to um, including all their games on Windows, which is a Microsoft product, and Xbox, I think they have the best of both worlds because you have, um, you know, their product where you're going to be able to play their games on both of their products. So it depends on the consumer then. Are you a consumer who's going to want the convenience of a console? Then you're going to buy the console. Are you a consumer who really wants to, um, even though these days computer games, there's really not a whole lot you have to do as far as settings and whatnot. But are you the, the, the PC buyer? kind of consumer that's going to want to shell out money to upgrade that system and whatnot. So a lot of people just like the convenience and the, and the um, ease of use of the console. So I think that having two different products uh, is a good idea for Microsoft. But it also makes 
pers my personal ownership of that console obsolete because I can play those two games on my gaming PC. And that's pretty much what I plan to do. Uh, the back end of that is that I'm somebody who doesn't, uh, once I play a game, I will sell it. So that's not something you can do on PC. It's, you know, once you buy it, it's yours. Or at least you have a license to use it. Who knows how things will be down the line. When you have a physical copy, you can actually resell that. So that's, you know, the one thing on the console side where it's like, okay, if there were more games that I wanted to play on Xbox One, the platform, then I would potentially buy an Xbox One S, not an X, but an S, um, because then I could still play those games and then cycle those games through and sell them because I don't like to keep things too much. Although sometimes I'm getting a little bit of a nostalgia here, so there's a little bit of a collecting in video gaming, but that's for another video. But typically I will play a game and, and then just sell it. So the reason I am not compelled to buy an Xbox One X is that the power is not that important to me. Uh, you do want a more powerful system that your system isn't chugging, that you know that you're, you're not dealing with something that's uh, you know marginally within the realm of what's... Uh, what's commonplace for gaming out there. Uh, so that's, you know, where power for me uh, is important. And then beyond that, it's not important. So the most powerful console on the planet, that doesn't speak to me. Uh, but I think more importantly, it's the games. And it's not so much that Microsoft has put their, um, you know, all their products on both their platforms, PC and console, but it's more... The problem is more so that Microsoft has kind of gutted their first parties. Um, there are really not many first party games available on Xbox as a platform, and I think that is the underlying problem. Given the fact that I own a PC, I think I would be more apt to buy an Xbox One, not X, but Xbox One, if there were just more first party titles that are not available, let's say on PlayStation. So PC, yeah, whatever, but there's, there's something, there's a convenience, especially when you have friends over of having a console and picking up and playing. So there's, there's a compelling, uh, part there. So in closing, um, basically what I'm saying is that the power doesn't speak to me as a consumer, it doesn't really do much for me. It all comes down to the games, and that's kind of a no-brainer when you think about it, because at the end of the day, it's fun to play with a new gadget, and it's nice to see what it does, but at the end of the day, it's all about the content. Content, content, content. Because once the shininess wears off of the new device, you want to do something with it, and if it doesn't allow you to do the things that you want to do, you're going to do your things somewhere else. So... Um, I just don't think the software library exclusives on Xbox as a platform are compelling enough for me to purchase the system. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I did have an Xbox One on launch day, and I did an unboxing of that. I have sold that system. I no longer have it. So Xbox as a platform, I have been uh, able to do without for the first time in uh, the entire time that uh, Microsoft has been in the console game. This is the first generation where I just don't need an Xbox. So I would buy an Xbox One S if they had more exclusives, basically. And I think that's where they're coming. That's I've heard rumblings that they're, that they're working on a lot of first-party titles, which I think is great. But, um, you know, something like that, it's sort of like planting a seed and then that seed will come to fruition in two or three years. So we're not talking about, you know, anything right now. Now, of course, Xbox One X has been in the works for however many years. So who knows how long ago that they went and thought, well, software is important too. Let's start getting some of those first-party titles out. New IP, new Microsoft IP, uh, or at least from first-party uh, developers. More so, they've been closing down and canceling games than they have been uh, announcing new exclusive IP. AAA titles, I'm not talking about like Cuphead, which to me, I, I understand the appeal of Cuphead. It's very uh, 
groundbreaking in the way that you can actually make a video game look like 30s, 1930s animation, but um, it just doesn't speak to me as a game. Uh, and it's not a AAA type game that I would want to um, purchase a system for, basically. Plus I can get Cuphead on my PC if I was so inclined. So it all comes down to those first party titles, it all comes down to that IP that they've kind of put on the back burner for whatever reason. Uh, they really need to focus on that and then maybe I'm hopeful I want to buy an Xbox again because I like to have as many systems as possible. Uh, the same can be said about the Switch. If you saw my video earlier when I unboxed the Nintendo Wii U uh, when the Switch came out, um, it's the same situation over there. Um, Mario, I grew up with the NES. Uh, the Nintendo Entertainment System, and uh, Mario Odyssey just doesn't speak to me. But that's for another set of videos of, of uh, maybe some huge Titanic um, uh, 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 franchises that just don't do much for me. Even though I loved Mario as a kid, it just doesn't do anything for me these days. So there's nothing on the Switch right now that makes me want to buy it. But I'm waiting, because I want to buy a Nintendo Switch. I thought about it the other day. But there's just no reason to buy it because I'm not going to play anything on it. So the same thing holds true uh, with the Xbox platform as a whole. But I want to own all the consoles out there. I'm not somebody who likes to just stick with one. But as it sits right now, as it stands right now, the PlayStation 4 is meets all my gaming needs, that and my PC. And uh, then I have a couple handhelds that I do uh, now and again. But And then retro gaming and whatnot. But... I would like Microsoft to fix this, basically. That's what this video is about. It's not a hate video. It's not a fanboy video. It's all about... I wish... I yearn for the days when I had all the, all the different gadgets under my TV because each one offered something unique. And that's what I like. Variety. So that's going to do it for this, this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe and consider spreading the word about this channel. Uh, we recently uh, passed 40,000 subscribers, and that's awesome, but uh, I still want the channel to grow. So share the video if you like it, and uh, if you want to help me monetarily, you can join my Patreon, all of which is greatly appreciated. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time, and be good to each other. Oh, and one more thing. I wanted to thank Carl for joining my Patreon recently. Um, I don't know if he wants me to use his last name, so I won't, but I do want to thank Carl for joining. Of course, Bob Sauer, you always see his name at the end of these videos because he's a supporter on Patreon, uh, and I want to thank him as well. Uh, as, it, as time goes on, as I get more patrons, um, I will thank you personally in each and every one of my videos. So, see you next time.